Hello, this is Alexander Kerry, and you're watching UATV Head to Head. This week, the UN High Court gave its judgment on several pre preliminary measures in Ukraine's case against Russia in The Hague. But what are the consequences of this ruling, and of the case in general? Today, we're joined on Skype by Boris Babin. He's an expert on international law based at the International Humanitarian University in Odessa, Ukraine. Hi, thank you for joining us in the studio. Good day. Uh, in your opinion, does the recent granting of provisional measures to Ukraine bode well for Ukraine, uh, for Ukraine's case going forward? I think that all those measures are very important for future uh, procedures, but anyway, they are not the decisive one. So we can hope and we can apologize that these uh, measures are the final. It's only provisional measures and they are devoted to the current situation till the final decision of International Court of Justice will be and I think it will be in few next few years. So, so what are the exact effects of these provisional measures? Are they more, as you said, a symbolic gesture by the court? I think that are not so symbolic as the court uh, specially addressed it on duty to execute the rights of Crimean Tatar people's uh, representatives' body as majlis of Crimean Tatar people, and it is uh, specially pointed in the act, in the uh, act uh, of given by court of 19 of uh, April this year, and the Russian Federation should execute this uh, decision. Oh. As a um, demand on uh, Ukrainian language in Crimean schools and universities are also obligatory and it is uh, just a little bit more easier for Russia to execute or simulate executions. But anyway, they are uh, now able to do uh, those measures. Ellis uh, could did not give us uh, and Russia measures uh, referring uh, on convention of stopping the terrorism. And this is very problematic situation, uh, as uh, Russian propaganda says now that uh, uh, High Court rejected of Ukrainian demands. It is not so, but in propagandic efforts, those propagandic of propaganda efforts now are being from Russia. So I understand what you what you say, but Georgia brought a similar case against Russia in 2011. Um, at the time, the ICG upheld. Russia's objections and the matter was closed. What, what steps can Ukraine take to avoid that, that sort of result? Uh, the Georgian appeal was closed because the uh, International Court of Justice uh, watched uh, that Georgia did not pass the procedure. The procedure of diplomatic communication, the procedure of attempt of uh, establishing special arbitrage, special ad hoc institutions for solving this dispute, is this dispute and Ukraine during last three years hold the, the diplomatic uh, negotiation with Russia and it is documentalized procedure and I hope that uh, lawyers of Ukraine in this court and they are American from Covington and Burning will give the High Court all uh, the proofs uh, relating to the procedure and this is a distinguished uh, uh, between the Ukrainian position and position so of Georgia diplomatic, in diplomatic uh, measures. Well. Uh, so, so right now, what are the primary legal challenges uh, Ukraine's faces? Uh, the main challenge is that court uh, demanded to execute the Minsk agreements. The Minsk agreements, according to Geneva law, are keys for agreements, and they are not international treaty. Neither as they are proved by the. Uh, Security Council of United Nations. But now the International Court of Justice demand both Russia and Ukraine to execute the provisions of Minsk agreements and it is not so good as for Ukraine as we uh, those agreements are very negative for Ukrainian state uh, sovereignty. Also it's uh, negative for Russia as Russia's official positions was that Russia is not the party of Minsk agreements but High Court of Justice, the International Court of Justice, told that Russia is the part of Minsk agreements. In, in the preliminary measures, the, the court noted that Ukraine had not brought enough evidence to force uh, Russia to stop its proxy forces in eastern Ukraine, because we were talking about Minsk agreement. What, what sort of evidence would be necessary here? 
Well, there are two kinds of evidence. First kind, to uh, give evidence of financing the uh, forces acting from Russia in Donbass region. And other evidence is to prove that those money was spent for terrorist acts. As I think, first evidences were given from Ukraine to court. But the problem is for other kind of evidences. The evidences on those Russian money was spent not for common occupation uh, duties, but strongly for the organizing and executing the terrorist act. And it is uh, really hard to prove, of course, everybody understood it is not a very uh, simple task. I hope Ukrainian uh, state government offices have a task now to find those uh, additional uh, proofs and give them to the High Court of Justice. So Ukraine has, has multiple, multiple claims against Russia in both public and, and private international courts. Uh, how would uh, an ICG judgment differ from other cases made? In this situation, uh, the most important uh, is for claims from Crimea that have ground on discrimination. There are a lot of claims of Ukra Crimean Ukrainians and Crimean, Crimean Tatars uh, reflecting the issues of their discrimination by the Russian occupation authority. Uh, especially, for example, for Crimean Tatar activists and members of Majlis of Crimean Tatar people. And now, as we have a uh, prima facie uh, International Court of Justice decision and its order to stop such discriminations, it gives us the understanding that this court recognizes the several fact of this discrimination and, of course, this recognition of Russian discrimination of those entities will be reflected in the decisions, for example, of European Court on Human Rights, UN committees and other uh, international executive bodies. Uh, and assuming the ICG rules in, in favor of Ukraine, uh, what effects would, be, would we expect to see on ground uh, in the conflict uh, of Eastern, Eastern Ukraine itself? If any I think that we have we will not see just in few months or even during the next year the real uh, consequences of this decision as it is uh, not the final decision uh, the real consequences uh, i hope will appear after the final decision will be uh, proclaimed and i hope it will be in favor of international law and in favor of ukrainian uh, legal interests violated by Russian aggression. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Babin, for this uh, interview. It was a pleasure. Uh, it was Mr. Boris Babin, he's an ex expert on international law based at the International Humanitarian, Humanitarian University in Odessa, Ukraine. You're watching Head to Head. Stay tuned for the rest of the program.